You are zooming in right now to the headquarters of a nation. And this weekend, the centre of attention in the V8 Supercar Championship. Very mild, clear conditions in the capital. There's been the threat, in fact, a little bit of rain overnight in the last couple of days, but generally very good during the day. Very pleasant for not only the competitors, but the spectators here in Canberra. So far, so good in what could be a decisive round of the championship. Hello, I'm Bill Woods. Welcome to Pit Lane here for a 400 kilometre, 400 point test of supercar strength. A very important round for the man who so far has dominated the championship, Mark Scaife, because of all the rounds this year, this one is perhaps the best equipped to bring him undone. This is the only and first reverse grid round of the championship, and that means no matter how well you qualify, you simply cannot escape the danger. Get ready for cold conditions and hot heads, because in Canberra, sometimes even the best lose their cool. Race one of three, reminding you that no matter how well you do today, you will be up the back tomorrow. So it is a very intriguing event indeed. And there's lots of drama going on outside the racetrack as well. We'll come to that in just a moment. But Matthew and Mark, this is going to be the race that sets up the weekend. You are absolutely right, Bill. And just take a look who's out the front. Craig Lowndes from the Double Zero Motorsport team has pole position for race one. Jason Bright alongside him. That'll be a hell of a battle right from the word go. Murphy and Richards in the second row of the grid. That is where Mark Scaife is, position number six. He's alongside David Bernard. Then it's Stephen Johnson and Todd Kelly. Yeah, a lot of guys got caught out by the cold tyres in the top 15 shootout. Really shuffled the grid around. Max Wilson, though, doing well to get to the top 10. Engel and Neil Crompton also did well into 12. Garth Tander will start from position 13. He went backwards in the shootout. John Bow made up one position. He started in 15th and got up to 14th. Marcus Ambrose is way back after his disaster in the shootout. Perkins, Larkham, Kelly, Paul Wheel starting from position number 20. Then Simon Wills, Stephen Ellery's having a few problems. We'll check on those shortly. Cameron McConville and Tony Longhurst. Brad Jones and Anthony Trent. Cameron McLean and Craig Baird in the team Brock Commodore, Jason Richards in the team Kiwi entry, Paul Morris debuting the brand new Ceramet Racing Commodore, Jason Bargwana in all sorts of trouble, and Rodney Forbes back there, John Faulkner and Wayne Wakefield making his return to V8 Supercar Racing. Take a look at that, 34 cars, turn one will be an absolute nightmare. Lounds alongside him is Bright, it is Ford versus Holden at the front. Then another two Holdens behind him and Scape starting from sixth position. Ready to go for the stick bar, 400 underway. It seemed pretty even between Bright and Lounds and Bright's gonna get through first. Puts the squeeze on the, oh, on the green eyed monster and Bright goes through turn one. Lounds wasn't prepared to give way there, right in the end he had to, and he was going to get squeezed into those tyres. But the field managed to get their way through the big traffic jam, and turn one is just clear, and now everyone's got their head down and they're into it. The last car just going out of view now. Jason Bright fought with Lounds. Lounds sideways as he comes through the corner. David Bernard goes with him. Everyone's on cold tyres, they're all leaning on each other. There's great opportunity from mayhem here on this first lap. That was an absolutely breathtaking start from Jason Bright. He had to apply the blowtorch from the word go and he did so, but Lounds has jumped back in front of him as they head up towards Falcon Corner. It is turn 10 and the new Parliament House is on their left-hand side. Paul Radisic in oh. colour 18. Had some trouble with one of the Aussie male Ford Falcons and also probably Neil Crompton in there. I think Crompton was caught up in that one. There's smoke coming from one of these cars as a result of that contact. That's John Bow. Bow. So he's got a right rear tyre rubbing on the guard. Contact with Neil Crompton further back in the pack. Car 66 just been given a black flag. He'll serve a drive through penalty for jumping the start. Tony Longhurst is in car number 66 for the better electrical Ford Falcon team. So Lowndes now gets stuck into it, opens up a bit of a car length on Jason Bright as they come down hard under brakes at the end of Flint Place for the first of 25 laps. Magnificent sight here, a capacity field of V8 supercars lurching and jumping over the curbs as everyone tries to settle down to a race strategy. to John Bow to stay out there. Stay out is the message from Aussie Mail to John Bow. They're going to try and keep him out there until the window opens and then uh, see how that problem with that car is. Pit window opens, laps two. Two laps completed and it closes after 17 laps. And the expectation here is that no one wants to be left hung out to dry because you cannot pit under a safety car. 
So everyone's going to come flying into the pits after two laps completed. That's the that's the general consensus. But I'm sure there's some teams out there, particularly Marcus Ambrose, who might try and take advantage of the clear track and get a bit of track position. Into the flip-flop they go. Craig Lowndes leads us through after lap one. Jason Wright in second position. Greg Murphy crossed in third. Stephen Richards fourth. Mark Scaife has moved up one position to go to fifth. David Bernard sixth. Todd Kelly seventh. Stephen Johnson is eighth. Max Wilson is in ninth. And Russell Engel is holding down tenth position. Down through state circle. Cameron McLean comes into the pits with damage to the front left. And you can also see the Aussie male crew in front of him waiting to bring in one of their cars, which will be John Powell. Wow, look at the damage there. Oh, that's a mess. VIP Pet Foods cars had a big crunch. And they said they've got plenty of spare parts there on hand to try and affect the repair. Indicators on on car two, so it looks like Jason Bright is the first man to come in straight away. Stephen Richards follows him. They hit the limiter that rucks, pulls it all the way back to 40 kilometers an hour and look at this one two three four five six seven cars come in make that eight with Cameron McConville. Well Lowndes has no reason to come in yet he's got clear track in front of him he is going to absolutely go for broke and try and make up as much track position as he can while there's no cars around him car 16. Stephen Richards makes an early stop and it seems like an eternity here. It's about 40 seconds to make a good stop. That's from when you switch your speed limiter on, start trundling down pit straight, stopping and getting back out. It's about 40 seconds and that could be crucial later in the race when we get some overlaps happening. Stephen Johnson goes out, Jason Bright goes out, so Scaife's still out on the circuit. Yeah, with, um, I just spoke to Marcus Ambrose's crew. They're going to leave him out as long as they can um, with a clear circuit. You know, a hell of a lot of people came in that last lap, and I suppose the idea is to get some uh, free space, and um, when he catches up to some people, then he'll come in and get fresh tyres. Yeah, it's just amazing watching the strategists at work in the pit lane, these V8 supercars. There's guys with all sorts of computer modelling running a million different strategies and possibilities in there. Here comes Todd Kelly, car 15, the first of the Kmart Commodores in. Team well drilled. There's new wheel nuts developed by Holden Racing Team for the opening round of Adelaide this year. This lap, we are here. And working beautifully. Here come some more cars. Cars coming out, some coming in. Seaton's in. Craig Lowndes lead, 2.8 seconds. Might be coming in this lap. That may have been Oscar Fiorinotto, chief engineer for Craig Lowndes, may be coming in this time around. So you're on board with the three times champion V8 supercar. Yeah, how hard he's pushing this in car. In this lap. In this lap. That sounds like Oscar, so I think my okay. see Lowndes peel off here. Gives the OK. And what's Lowndes going to do? He's made hay while the sun shone. He had a clear track and he really got his head down. Those 2.8 seconds that he has. Skate comes in nice as well. Nice and smooth, nice and smooth. Up on Westy, do not overshoot. Murphy comes in as well. So the three leading competitors all come in. This is going to be a great battle amongst the pit crews. Watch this. Pressure's on. Yeah, it doesn't look like that allowance is It doesn't look like there's any uh, damage from the coming together with Bright here, the first corner. So uh, everything's going all right. That was a great stop from the Gibson, I should say, the double O Motorsport crew. <laughs> <laughs> Slip of the yeah, tongue there. The Gibson team were very quick here last year, and that's carried on in new ownership. Now let's watch Mark Scaife. Let's see how the race goes here, boys. Scaife is here. Up pit lane now comes Craig Lowndes, who will get out ahead of each other. Lowndes is going to get past him here. Will Murphy get past as well? They're going to have to wait. So Murphy gets out ahead of Scaife. Well, that was good of the car controller there to hold Scaife in. That's the regulations. If a car is in pit lane, there's a risk of a collision. And Jason Bright goes through as well. And Bright's made his stop. So this is effectively going to be the battle for the lead a bit later on in the race. It's an interesting challenge this time around for Mark Scaife, isn't it? We've seen him lead from the front and barely have any pressure put on him over the first four rounds of this 2002 championship. Now we get to see something different for Mark Scaife. He had to start from position six. They would have put the squeeze on him and started to pressure him as soon as they could have. And we get to see how Mark Scaife gets Whoa. the challenge. Oh, Craig Lowndes locks it up. Going around turn 10. So Murphy. Everyone trying to get their tyres up to temperature. He's trying to drive defensively to keep Jason Bright out. Mark Scaife's dropped back a little bit to get some temperature into his tyres. Fastest man on the track so far and Bright attacks. Under brakes into the VB turn. He goes wide and Murphy gets the position back. 
So a big brake lock up, just showing there the tyres not up to temperature. And Jason Bright, big flat spot on that tyre as he got into the brakes too hard. So a great battle here. Craig Lowndes, Mark Scaife, Greg Murphy. Look at this pack thundering down. Flip place. Craig Lowndes now really has to get his head down and punch out some fast laps if he's going to beat this Holden onslaught. First place car on the track at the moment, David Bernard, Russell Engels behind him. Bernard's come into the pits as well, I believe. And so too did Russell Engel. Marcus Ambrose is still yet to pit, so car number four is still out there. No one wants to be hung out there to dry. Here's David Bernard. He's already made his stop. He'll rejoin the track. So too the Castrol Commodore of Russell Engel. Here's this move again. This was really aggressive stuff on the Nintendo replay. And Bright oh. paid the penalty. Just carried too much speed into the corner. Murphy took the position back and Mark Scaife was able to capitalise, made up a huge amount of room on the road. Well, we saw just how much drama that corner could cause throughout qualifying in the shootout when there was only one car on the track. We just got a graphic illustration then of what it's like when two cars are going hammer and tong in there under brakes. Well, if there's any Ford fans out there... Jason, car double zero, Craig Lowndes is going to get a stop go, a stop go, so you will be in P2 effectively, P2. I was just about to say, Craig Lowndes is about to get a black flag for crossing the yellow line on the pit exit. There's a very strict rule there, and they have been fairly inconsistent in applying penalties to it. FA clarified that Merck was catching me in a pit lane. So the officials are saying that he's crossed the yellow line as the cars exit the pit lane. And the yeah, double O car will have to serve uh, drive through penalty. Well, what a shame. I think an easier path for championship leader Mark Scaife, who started the race from further down the grid than ever before this year. Well, we've also a black flag penalty for car two, Jason Bright. And I believe it's for the same infringement, not exiting the pit lane correctly. We can't argue, mate. We, Another have, to, uh, we have to have a drive through penalty, mate. So it looks like Jason Bright has crossed the yellow line as well. Isn't it bizarre to think that a simple slap of paint can have such a difference on the complexion of this race? Greg Murphy is the race leader now, Mark Scaife in second, Todd Kelly in third. The critical thing though is to watch the gap between Marcus Ambrose and Greg Murphy. At the moment on the track it's Ambrose leading, Craig Baird in second, John Faulkner in third and Murphy in fourth. Now those people at home are going to try and get a replay of the incident where Craig Lowndes was pinged. See this yellow line to the left of his car as he comes out of pit oh. lane. No, Wendy Wadley just comes out here. The cars have to stay. Oh, this is a different... That's coming into pit lane, yeah. Mark, where he's, uh, where he's entered. And of course, his pit is right down the very start of pit lane and the Holden Racing Teams is right up the end. So I don't know whether they've pinged him for on the way in or on the way out. I would have thought it was on the way on out. The way out. But anyway, we'll get confirmation of that. Oh, no, so apparently it is on the way in. Yep. So he's just uh, pulled the car a little bit right, almost like he was about to pull into his pit a little bit too early and misjudged it, basically. Well, what that does, though, is plays into the hands of Greg Murphy, Mark Scaife in second, Todd Kelly in third. But that's not on the road. On the road, it's Ambrose, Baird, Faulkner. But... This interesting thing is going to be when Ambrose comes in to make his compulsory tyre stop. Because he's, uh, what, what, 13... About 23 seconds up the road from Greg Murphy. And a pit stop effectively takes you about 40 seconds. Here's Rodney Forbes. Oh. Just into the tyre wall. Nothing too bad out of that one. Certainly not as bad as what Stephen Ellery did in qualifying. He hit that sidewards at full lock. So Marcus Ambrose is going to have a chance at maintaining the race lead. He's got to get a lead of about 40 seconds over Greg Murphy if he's going to have a chance of doing that. Because it takes about 40 seconds to complete a stop. That is from entering pit lane, stopping, then driving out again. Uh, here's Greg Murphy trying to make as much track position as he can. He's held up behind one of the Valvoline Cummins Commodores. Jason Bogwana. So once again, one of the
the major four teams manages to shoot itself in the foot at a critical time in the race. Oh, there's Rick Kelly. Rick Kelly. Holding Young Lions car, and he's parking that. So I'm not quite sure what happened to Rick there. Looks like some sort of technical failure. Maybe an accident. We'll find out when the race is over. But Marcus Ambrose is 25 seconds, just over 25 seconds in front of Greg Murphy. Ambrose is leading the race. Murphy's fourth, but Murphy is the first of the cars to have made his compulsory stop. So Lowndes really needs to have about 40 second lead on Murphy if he's to maintain his lead when he comes into make his compulsory stop. Pit window closes on lap 17 and they've now completed 11. Positions 9 through to 12 is what we're taking a look at at the moment. Johnson, Bernard, Engel and Radisic in a nice little scrap for ninth position. Just had a word to Pete Smith, who looks after Rick Kelly and the whole Young Lions team. He tells he tells me that uh, there's something horribly wrong in the drive line. It was making all sorts of weird vibrations, and Rick's been forced to park it. That's a shame for young Rick Kelly. Look at this, though. They're right in the middle of the action here. Stephen Johnson defending hard from David Bernard. Engel goes on the inside and gets closed out by Bernard as well. Shell Helix in car camera looking back at David Bernard as they sweep through State Circle. And down hard under brakes into VB turn. This is the battle. And Stephen Johnson is yet to make his compulsory stop according to the timing monitor here. And Marcus Ambrose, I believe, is coming in to make his stop. So race leader, there he is. So Ambrose, unless something goes wrong with Greg Murphy, he will get overlapped here by the first of the cars to make his compulsory stop. Watch the <laughs> Helix pit stop clock on the bottom left hand of your screen. Yeah, it's um, by Ambrose's pit. It doesn't uh, look like there's any problems. Oh, the rear, rear right a little bit slow there, but um, no, he's away. Paul Forky Bass has also been on the radio to Marcus and he said, watch the yellow line, watch the yellow line, Marcus. So they're really policing that very carefully now, these teams. Cameron McConville. In trouble, the team running right down to the pit entry, having to push him in. So there's major technical failure there with the Commodore. Has not been a good weekend so far. He's 20th on the championship coming into this round. And had to race from the back of the pack all weekend at our last round at Darwin through the Ford Sweeper as we rejoin this battle group. Roundabout positions, 8, 9 and 10, somewhere in there. Yet to sort itself out because the pit window closes, remember, at lap 17. It opened on lap two, closes at lap 17. Craig Baird is one in the Team Brock car, number 54, who's yet to come in. He's the last car, in fact, to, to make his compulsory stop. He's leading this race by 9.3 seconds over Greg Murphy. And every car behind him has made his compulsory stop. Oh, problems here for Russell Engel. You saw him mixed up in that real elbow-to-elbow -elbow battle a few laps ago. Yeah, I'm down here. I'm just having a look. If there's, uh, I can't see anything physically. Uh, maybe, yeah, but the looks of it, the left rear was uh, deflated. So, um, yeah, left rear is sort of wriggling. Yeah, flat, in actual fact, is the answer to that. <laughs> yeah, no, no, Russell, the, that's, uh, the that's the technical term. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I told him just to turn the flat bits to the top. Just also, <laughs> also notice a tiny little flame in the, uh, in the front left as well when they changed that. Flat left rear tyre, we've had confirmed from the boys. So Russell gets back into the action. That's going to cost him a lot of track position. Looking out the back of Stephen Johnson's car. This is the battle for 8th, 9th, 10th, 11th and 12th spot. Larry Perkins in the thick of things there too. So Stephen Johnson managed to get a run. Oh, oh no, Greg Murphy. Greg Murphy. He has nothing going on under the engine bay of the Kmart Commodore, he's bailing. It's one of the worst sights you'll see for a V8 supercar driver when they're sitting there hitting switches randomly in the cockpit of the car. Major troubles for Greg Murphy. He was leading the race. Well, if this championship was ever designed for Mark Scaife to win, they're serving it up to him on a plate round after round. Mark Scaife in the lead. Things have gone very, very well for him so far and only six laps to go for him to consolidate. But right now you're looking at Junior Johnson after having had a little moment and an off, has spun his way back onto the circuit just in front of Mad Max Wilson. <laughs> Mad Max, qualifying king, Max Wilson. 
got up into the shootout once again and he's in the top 10 that's what he needs to be doing there he is with the pink ears on the better electrical ford falcon look, look who's behind him yeah craig louds this is the incident of stephen johnson oh he might have got a bit of a nudge there from his teammate his teammate of all people he was in the wars in darwin junior johnson had to uh rebuild the front right hand side of car number 17. i'll just follow him around the track here and let you know some of the incredible landmarks that they pass there's no other race quite like it anywhere in the country down state circle parliament house on their left hand side vb corner is turn 11. they swing around and the chinese embassy is now on their right hand side craig lounge trying to make up time they're the fastest lap times from the race Ambrose 45 01 45 2. You can see they're quite close. The different laps, good consistency from the Ambrose machine. Stephen Johnson trying to stay ahead of this pack coming, bearing down on him. Max Wilson under attack from Craig Lowndes, who is fighting back fiercely from that drive through penalty he copped. But who is rapidly running out of laps to do all this because it's on lap 20 of 25. Louds has worked his way back up to 11th position. He went all the way back down to around about 20 at one stage. So he's fighting his way through the field. At least that might be a good omen for the reverse gridder tomorrow. And Oscar Fiorinato just telling him to use his headlights to apply him. And a little bit more oh. pressure. Neil Crompton gets the jump on him from John Bow Just snuck on the inside of turn 10. So Bowles really pushing hard, trying to close the gap to Lowndes, who's putting plenty of pressure on Max Wilson. And it's great to see Max having a consistent run. He certainly showed he can drive the car quickly, but he hasn't got it together in a race situation. But now he's right in the thick of things. Craig Lowndes right behind him. Lowndes will be desperate to pass the Brazilian. Look at the big box. Oh, he might have had it. Is he had a tyre failure? Oh, he doesn't worry about the chicane and gets the runoff and uh, keeps going through. I was just about to say, do you reckon Craig Lowndes is a bit nervous with Max Wilson in front of him? Uh, Remember uh, Phillip Island, and that's the end of Max Wilson. The front left is all over the shot. Yeah, it looked like he, I thought he had a flat tyre at first, but he's actually Sparks had... Sparks is flying everywhere. Suspension failure or the wheels come loose or something. No, the wheel nut's still on there, so he's had some sort of <laughs> suspension failure. What a shame. <laughs> what a Max mess. was going brilliantly there. And he's just... Guys, is it to be a danger front left on the front left? It's damaged. Alex Zirkling, the German engineer who oversees the preparation of the John Briggs Motorsports cars, warning the crew that they have the spanners ready because Max is going to need some quick fix-up work here. Look at the sparks flying from all the suspension components grinding into the asphalt. Now he just... He's in pit out. lane, he's in pit lane. No 40 kilometre an hour speed limit needed for Max Wilson. That car is just grinding itself down as he limps it along pit lane. He's going to get it back to the pits, but there's going to be all sorts of damage to the lower suspension and perhaps the steering on that car. So they want to give it a thorough check out before they send him back into racing. I hate to say it, Marco, but just as he came in there, I know he's on three wheels only, but as he came in there, that, that ugly yellow line seemed to get in the way of, uh, of the middle of the car. We're here. Guys, they're telling him to kill it, and Max is none too happy about it either. The engine is off. It is over for Max Wilson in this one. We'll try and get a word with him as he gets out of the car. He, he's pretty fired up, let me tell you. Max, what happened? I don't know. Something broke in the front suspension. Not a happy camper, guys. No, something broke in the front suspension, I think he said. Certainly looked that way. Oh, well. He's certainly showing a lot of speed, a lot of potential. Let's have a look at what happens here. Looks like the car just drops down. There it goes. Oh, there it goes. So you can see something fails in the front suspension. The car drops down on its right front corner. And then Max has to try and limp it back. Maybe a lower ball joint, upright failure. Could be anything. We'll only find out when we have a look after the race. But that's a big disappointment for the Briggs Motorsport team. 25 lap a race one to get the steg bar for. Two laps, Marcus. Two laps to go. Just keep it patient, mate. You're doing well. That's Paul Forge. Marcus Ambrose, chief engineer, always wears the headsets in pit lane. Tries to calm his driver down. And Marcus was was just shattered after that accident he had in the top 15 shootout. Really wound up to try and put the car on pole position, but it all went haywire. Mark, it took, Mark, it took them a long time to actually get a smile back on Marcus's face. Now, there is a drama, I can tell you, for car 18. Paul Radisic, he's radioed into the Dick Johnson racing team. He says, I've got no brakes left. No brakes. They're telling him, try and nurse at home. Do your best. 
Yeah, well, <laughs> driving around this place with no brakes, it's hard enough with a, a good handling car. <laughs> May so. as well take the steering wheel out as well. Exactly. Taking aim Here at the comes. flagpole of Parliament House. Here's Radisic. We'll see how he handles this. He'll be giving that six-speed Hollinger gearbox murder from now on. He'll be using the the transmission to try and brake the car, stabbing it down into low gears, using the engine braking as much as he can. He's doing all right at the moment, though. Radisic to get it back. He's nursing it along well. It's going to be interesting next year, Matty, doing the uh, Tigers Project Blueprint, they're calling it, which basically standardises the suspension and running gear of the Commodore and the Falcon. Because there has been some criticism, some question marks over the tunability. Oh, oh. he's here for Ingle. He's broken his front end as well. That's a turn one. He's headed straight towards the runoff area. Didn't have to go that far. Look at the way that the right front is wobbling all over the place. Maybe he's clipped one of those tyre markers on the apex of one of the turns or clouded a concrete wall. Let's see what's going on here. Well, look, the way that right front wheel was wobbling around loose. Let's have a look. Here's Ingle in the front of his shot. Oh, it's come loose before Ooh. we got that shot. So, so what I was saying, this place is murder on cars around here, pounding them off curbs and bouncing them over things. What did Marcus Ambrose say to, uh, to Barry? He called it a car breaker. It, it is a car breaker. It's tough on transmissions, tough on steering, tough on suspension. Well, everything has gone his way. They often say that you create your own luck and the luck will fall to those who are often out in front anyway. But right now, Mark Scaife has done everything possible to make sure that he steered clear of the dramas that have unfolded in just a short time, really, in terms of the V8 Supercar Championship, the way it's been going, just 25 laps, and you can't imagine what's gone on from start to finish. Mark Scaife has pushed himself to the front, and that's where he stayed yet again. The question coming to Canberra was, would this be the round, this hell of a circuit, this nasty circuit, this tricky place with the reverse grid and the chill factor, would that finally slow down the Holden Racing Team Commodore number one driver? The answer on Supercar Saturday at least is no. The streak continues for Mark Scaife. Takes the checkered flag, Stephen Richards will come home. Okay, good job, mate. Well done. Greg Murphy. Thank you. Marcus Andrews. Great job. Fighting his way. So what did they all get the drive throughs for? And look at the Red Army at Holden Corner. They rise as one and applaud this winner. Nine times out of 11 races in 2002, Mark Scaife has found the chequered flag first. He weaved his way up through the field. He started from position number six and he's out in front at the end of Saturday. Stephen Richards second, Todd Kelly third. So an all Holden podium for race one. Ambrose and Bernard from Stone Brothers Racing in four and five. And Larry Perkins was in six, Gartanda seventh. Paul Radisic was eighth. Lowndes did a good job to fight his way back to ninth. Johnson rounding out the top ten. John Bow in 11. Neil Crompton, Paul Wheel, Glenn Seaton, Craig Baird. And Jason Bright was down there as well. Bradley Jones and Stephen Ellery. And Mark Larkin takes us up to the top 20. So that wraps up race one, the first 25 lapper of the Stegbar 400. Remember, we've still got a reverse grid and then the 240 point race to go. Come back and join us right after this.